Hi, my friend and I have started a YouTube channel about some boomer social issues. It's a hobby. Now, technically, I want to create new graphics for each day's show. Most will remain the same, but some I'll want to change. Premiere provides tools where one can create many types of graphics. Unfortunately, the way Premiere allows one to organize those graphics doesn't work for me. If you work with Premiere, you may not agree, but you'll understand. What I'd love to see Adobe do is create a way to add graphics from a folder into a project panel. That way, I could copy a folder from a previous project and make modifications to it as I see fit for that current episode. Another way of explaining it is graphics are linked to the Premiere application more than the project. Maybe there is a way to do what I want. If so, please leave a comment. Anyway, I'm willing to sacrifice Adobe super high-tech graphics for a process that is easier for me to keep organized. This is just what I want. I don't recommend it. But if you find Adobe's way of organized graphics frustrating, then the workflow I'm about to show you may interest you. I use one PowerPoint file to generate all the graphics I'll need for the YouTube channel. There's a title, um, which obviously I'll change every day. Then the lower thirds, here's me and here's my friend. And then the thumbnail, which I'll use uh, you know, for the YouTube video. Um, and also the other graphics I may use. Now, these graphics aren't only for Premiere or a similar video editor. The PowerPoint workbook can also create small transparent WebM files that OBS handles very well. The trick used is to use FFmpeg to chroma key out the background green, in my case, generated by PowerPoint's MP4 export. It creates either a WebM with transparency or a ProS 444 video file with the alpha channel, which allows for transparency. Let me point out that this technique can be used with any graphics software that can export video. That is, you could use Graphinex, say, and use FFmpeg to create the WebM or ProRes 4444 files the same way I do in PowerPoint, by shelling out FFmpeg or calling it from the command line. OK, let's go through the process with PowerPoint. I use Textbox to store our config information for the project. For instance, here is the um, uh, the FFmpeg folder where I have FFmpeg, here's where I want to put the MP4s that uh, PowerPoint will generate, the WebM files, move files, which are my ProRes files, how big I want to size the, 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 the output uh, from FFmpeg, I should say, uh, because in uh, PowerPoint, I'm always going to use the highest, which is uh, 4K, and then the JPEGs for my thumbnails, etc. So how do we access these? Well, first of all, on these text boxes, how do we name them in a way that we can use in our VBA program? This part is a little weird. So we have to go into Arrange, Selection Pane, and then here we can see the names on the, on the right, and we can change the names here. Once we've done that, we can now go into our Visual Basic. So in Vis Visual Basic, uh, I have one procedure. And uh, what it does is, well, first of all, it uses that how many, do you want to just do one slide? Do you want to do them all? It figures out that here. And basically, here's where it gets the values. So for the FFmpeg folder, it uses active presentation slides one, shape, shapes, text, FFmpeg folder. Um, and if we go back to um, this thing, if we look here, that's what it is down here. You can see that's the name. So we match this name to what we're going to want to call in the, FA, in the VBA code. And so I write to these um, variables. And then if I don't have something for the size defaulted to 1920, now I don't really need to create other variables to hold the path plus the slash, but I am because I may want to change this at some point just to use the active presentation path. And if I did that with a path, then I could reset these uh, pretty easily. This is the uh, FFmpeg, the basic chroma key. I'm going to use the color and the similarity in the chroma blend. These are you know, topics into themselves, but you can experiment. But anyway, this is what works for me best. I create two stub FFmpeg commands. This one's for the WebM. And as you can see, it's CV, lib, VPX, VP9. And the other one is for uh, ProRes. 
So text format YUVA 444P 101. I don't know what it means, but anyway, it works. <laughs> okay. So when we, now we create a object for, to shell out to FFmpeg. We count the slides. We go through the slides. We figure out you know which slide we're on. Now the the trick is that uh, PowerPoint doesn't have a a way just to export a single slide as a vi video. So what we need to do is actually, if we disable every slide except the one we want to export, it will only create a video for that slide. So that's the trick we, that we use. We use the notes field down here for the naming. So let's go back to the, then we get all our things. This is where uh, we create, we tell um, uh, PowerPoint to export the video. And as you can see the file name and path, that's going to be taken from the notes. See, S notes equals the notes page of that of that slide. Then we need to check is it done. Um, Microsoft is still not. I don't know. I don't think it's totally consistent yet in PowerPoint about uh, do events and stuff like that. Anyway, it got that to work. Work. So now, if we want to move file, if that's one of the files we want, you know put the FFmpeg together, kill the original file, and then run it with our command. And then that creates that. If we had WebM in our box, then we'll also create a WebM file using that stub, go to the next slide. And basically that's all there is to it. And then you'll go through the slides one more time. If JPEG is in the notes anywhere, it will save that slide as a JPEG into that folder um, of uh, the JPEG path and the notes JPEG. Okay, I'm going to take you through uh, an actual episode from start to finish. So today, uh, Craig and I talked, and um, we record the video using Riverside. And here on Riverside are the two files. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, download my video first. And this will be pretty quick. And uh, Riverside FM, let me tell you, uh, just gets better and better. Um, you know, the problems from time to time, but uh, <laughs> so far. And then I'm going to download Cra uh, Craig's version now. They have a bug there, but we'll ignore that. Uh, anyway, download that version. And um, I'm gonna, I think you'll see how quickly now this process is on a daily basis. And um, Riverside has a nice uh, function now or uh, feature where you can go and you can create a side-by-side um, -side clip, uh, which is like this. So I don't know why I'm not seeing myself, probably because he doesn't, okay, there we go. So I'm gonna export this whole thing. Uh, I don't have a watermark, but I'm gonna say remove it anyway. And I'm gonna do that. And then it'll email me when I'm ready. So we'll stop here and I'll be right back. Okay, now we'll go uh, download the side-by-side uh, -side clip. You can see it downloading up here. Now we're going to go into the downloads folder. Oops. I'm gonna pick the three clips and copy them. I'm gonna go into uh, the, um, we well, can't see this, but I'm creating a folder. New folder, 2022. 1106, and this will be called, um, I think, door knocking or something like that. Anyway, he's knocking on doors. So I'm going to go into the door knocking uh, folder and I'm going to copy the clips. Okay. I'm do a new project. Oops. Door knocking. Okay. And I'm just going to call this uh, today's date six. It doesn't really make a difference. Create. Now we'll go and we'll pull the files from um, from here and drag them into the project pane. And I, I know this is has little to do with PowerPoint, but I figured let's show you the whole process just so you you see what's going on. So I'm gonna. Take these uh, three clips and right click. I'm going to create create a multi camera source sequence, and I'm going to use uh, sorry, I'm going to use the audio. Even though actually 
Riverside generally, if I pick the synchronized clip, will have everything lined up. And I'm going to take this clip and drag it over here. I'm going to change to the multi camera view. And then we'll start playing it. And I'll start just do some initial switching. And actually, I want to start with me, which I shift over here. So you can see the um, the three clips, the audio below. I'm gonna uh, in the end mute the, uh, the the audio from from all the clips, which is probably this one. Uh, but for now, I'm just doing that just so you can see this the, the the sections. Now, of course, I'd like the title for here, and then when we get to Craig for a while, I want to put the title there, and I'll put the title for me. Probably around right here. Where do I talk again? Um, so uh, I'm going to talk. You know, how much do I talk there? All right. So I'll put my clip over here. All right. So I have the beginning of the edit of the video. I'm going to go into my PowerPoint. And on this slide, on the title slide, I'm just going to change this to door knocking. Again, this is an experimental site, so I'm not worrying about the titling too much. And I should mention, uh, just if I wasn't clear, or you might not realize, that these are all animations. So I'm going to the animation pane. So these are all pre-built animations. Now they're really pathetic design-wise, but anyway, you get the idea. And then here's the lower third. That's how that one works. So I'm only really going to need slide three, and then I'm going to want to change the what I use for the um, uh, the thumbnail for YouTube, the door knocking, and then generally change the uh, the background to a different color just to keep things, I don't know, whatever, varied. And now we can go into the Visual Basic, and I can just actually go run this procedure. And so I hit Run. Here's the FFmpeg that's processing. So PowerPoint created an MP4 file for that title thing. And then FFmpeg is creating the ProRes version of that file where it's using uh, the Chrome key function to pull out the green. And because it's in ProRes 444, it'll have a transparent background, which will become uh, apparent uh, very soon. So we'll go back to Premiere and go open the folder of my of this project. Uh, and so here's the, the PowerPoint. So in the MP4 directory, it's created the, um, the MP4 files from, uh, from PowerPoint. Okay, so now let's just open this. And we can see the MP4 animation that uh, the PowerPoint created. And then uh, so these are all created from PowerPoint. And then in the PowerPoint program, I shelled out to FFmpeg and create a move file. And so this is a move file, see so title move, and we'll play that. Um, but you can see it's like a back, black background. So, you know, VLC is not gonna show like the checkered thing you, you'll normally see in Photoshop or Premiere or whatever when you have a transparent background, but you'll see it does have a transparent background. Anyway, bottom line is you see how quickly it was to modify my title I could have modified these if I wanted, but I don't. So now I can just quickly take these, copy these, and bring these into the project panel of Premiere. And now for the title, I can just take the title, move it to the top here. And you can look at this thing right here. The, and here comes the title. So 
So I'm just actually shorten that. I don't need that that long. And then let's go to Craig, which is right here. And so Craig, I'm going to pull over his lower thirds right here above that. And then you'll see, see, here that comes. It's all transparent. And then I'll pull mine over to here, which will just barely make it. And so there's mine. Uh, and all right, so now, you know, go through and I'll edit all this and then I'll go into, um, uh, I'll go into the site here, I'll upload it and I'll upload the graphic, uh, the thumbnail. So it'll be one of these. Let's see, we have five subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the only reason I would watch these videos is if you had insomnia. Anyway, well, there you have it. And uh, again, I hope you find this uh, this useful. The PowerPoint again is in I put it on GitHub, so you can you can get it. And hopefully, I'll do some future videos where you can just use FFmpeg using batch files with other software of the same sort of technique. So again, you don't have to use PowerPoint. I'm just using PowerPoint because it has uh, a way to quickly animate things and um, keeps in one place. And because I've worked with Microsoft Office for so long, um, it's second nature to me. So it's just an easy tool for me to use. Well, that's it. Till later.